In my last video, I mentioned something very important. ETH 2.0 will make the ETH token deflationary. But I didn't explain in my video why that is, what it, or what does that mean? So let's get to that here. So in ETH 2.0, Ethereum will no longer be using proof of work, which is expensive, uses a lot of energy, computer power to secure the network. With proof of stake system and Ethereum's specific proof of stake, not all proof of stakes are created equally. A lot of time research has gone into ETH's implementation of proof of stake, which I believe is very secure. And in fact, I would claim more secure than Bitcoin. That's a topic for another video. In fact, on my playlist, I have a Ethereum versus Bitcoin video playlist. You can find that and more. Let's talk about deflationary though. What does that mean? So because proof of stake is more, um, it is more efficient, the, instead of having miners, we call them validators, the computers that process the transactions, okay, are called validators. In proof of work, they're called miners. And they are, Ethereum prints tokens to pay for the validators to process these transactions. Just like in Bitcoin, Bitcoin prints new Bitcoin to pay the miners, which is paying, miners are really just transaction processors, and Bitcoin prints new Bitcoin to pay those miners. And it prints about 2% more Bitcoin a year to do that, okay? Now, Ethereum is moving away from their system of proof of work where they also print new ETH to pay the miners, and they're printing about 5% more Ethereum a year currently, or maybe it's lower, whatever it is. But when they move to proof of stake, it's easier. And instead of paying a higher percent or even Bitcoin's 2%, they will only pay less than 1%. Okay, now the amount it pays depends on how many validators there are, how much money is staked. There's all these variables. And, you know, but... It, it, it's, it looks like it'll be less than 1%. It can't even go much higher than that, okay? So as far as Ethereum chain printing new Ethereum tokens, it will be printing just off the bat fewer than Bitcoin. But that's not deflationary. They're still printing tokens, right? Well, the deflation comes in with something that's already happening. Um, I forget the name of it when they implemented this over a year ago. So transaction fees, when you pay every transaction that is performed on Ethereum, you pay fees for it and you pay those fees in Ethereum. All of those fees used to go to the miners or and now those are going to become validators. But instead of those fees going to those transaction processors, the fees, the ETH, Paid in fees gets burned. And maybe you've heard the fees on Ethereum right now are expensive. And, you know, now if the fees on Ethereum become less expensive, then less ETH will be burned. If there were no transactions on Ethereum, right, it wouldn't be deflationary because they are printing new tokens. But because they're only printing about 1% and at the current rate that Ethereum had the, the level of the fees is so expensive. Hopefully the layer twos and they're scaling and, and the fees, well, at least if you're on a layer two and it's cheap fees, you don't care. If it's just expensive for like batches of uh, tens of thousands of transactions, then fine, the fees could be high. But bottom line is, even, this, even before proof of stake, because like I said, they're, they're printing some Ethereum, not a ton, but you know, more than Bitcoin. But the fees have been so high that in 2022 already, Ethereum has been deflationary because the transaction fees are requiring so much ETH to pay for the fees that tons of ETH is being burned and the total amount of ETH on the chain is, has actually been shrinking for 2022 when proof of stake 
when ETH 2.0 launches, then the, it's going to become even more deflationary. Now, maybe, you know, L2s, the layer twos, the scaling solutions are launching. We're in a bear market. So maybe the transaction fees goes down. So Ethereum is not burning as much, but they won't have to print as much in the first place with ETH 2.0. And anyways, the projections are, uh, Ethereum's already deflationary. Bitcoin isn't. And it's projected that that will continue. And let me just say, you know, because you'll, you'll hear it. They still have, you know, <laughs> listen, Bitcoin's fine. It's not a shit coin. And I wouldn't make fun of it so much if there weren't so many idiots who don't know what they're talking about with it, right? With this, oh, fixed supply. And they hate, you know, Ethereum's monetary policy. What did I just say? Like, it's, it's not, we don't know exactly what it's going to be. Because it's an algorithm based on, it's sort of like in Bitcoin, are you upset about the um, difficulty adjustment? Like how much computer power do the miners have to use in order to, you know, solve that puzzle to process the transaction? The difficulty, it adjusts based on how many miners are there. Well, similarly with Ethereum, based on how many validators there are, and how much money is staked, the amount that they print is, is a flexible thing. Flexibility is not, is not bad, you know, it's good. Now, if it's flexibility, like the central bank can just print four trillion tomorrow without any conversation and no accountability. Well, that's not, that's not flexibility, that's crazy, okay? And, and another thing people say, with Ethereum, oh, what if they decide to change? It's not they, it's just like Bitcoin. What if Bitcoin decides to print? Well, they, it's not, they can't. It has to be, everybody has to agree and do the fork. This ETH 2.0 fork, it was discussed before Ethereum launched in 2014. They're not going to just change the monetary policy. This isn't just a change. If anything, people are complaining it took so long to get here. And it was on the roadmap from whatever, seven years ago. It ain't gonna change. So in a sense, it is fixed on Ethereum. It's fixed in the smart contract. It's fixed in the code. And it's not changing, okay? But the amount that gets printed is dynamic so that it's more secure and runs well, just like Bitcoin's difficulty adjustment. So. In a sense, uh, you know, so it's, this is not a haphazard thing. This isn't, what if Vitalik decides a new monetary? It, it's not like that, okay? What do you think, guys? You, you understand what I'm saying? Anybody excited here about ETH 2.0? Let me, everybody give me a ho. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, yes, it's very exciting. Um, so put in the comments below, type ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm losing my mind here today. Um, or join the Discord. Links below. Follow me on Twitter. Give me a big thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss it. You got a video every day. Learning. It's important stuff. And I hope you're accumulating in the lows here, right? ETH, 80% off the highs just before a major upgrade. Listen, three to five years from now, you'll be happy. Just need a little bit. It'll 10x or more. Okay, just just a little. And it can go down more. Don't wait for the low. You buy when it's not stupid. Last year was stupid. This year's not stupid. Are you stupid? See you tomorrow.